This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If the children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom, Israel, Shabbat Aitan. Today we're going to talk about the destruction of the heathen in the end times. How they're after the thousand year reign of the Hamashiach, after we get a thousand years of payback, of retribution for the heathen of the nations, that there will be no more heathen left on the planet. No more heathen left on the earth. It'll be nothing but Israel. So I wanted just to start that out today, right? In Job 27 and 13, because I wanted you to understand that it does not matter about little babies or little children or any of that. If they be multiplied, they be multiplied for the soul. Okay, so we're going to start with 1 Corinthians today, right? Because what we're going to do, we're going to build up a premise so we can understand why it'll only be the children of Israel left on the earth because we are the only ones that are sanctified by the Most High God. Okay, so we're going to get uh, 1 Corinthians 2. Okay, we're going to start there real quick. Give me one second. I'll find this out. All right. All right. So it reads, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Because we are not people of the world. We are spiritual. We are holy. We are set apart. The Israelites, we are spiritual. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man are the heathen. They do not receive the things of the Spirit of God. That's why they will never get it. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why the heathen have to be destroyed. Okay, and it says, For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You understand? So let's let's read that scripture one more time. That verse 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, they don't have the Spirit. Okay, they cannot understand the Spirit of God. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's get another preset, right? Let's go. Um, we're going to stay in Corinthians for a little while, okay? So let's go to 10. Let's go to 10 real quick, right? And it says, Moreover, brethren, right? Other Israelites, moreover, brethren, I would have not that ye should be ignorant how that all of our fathers, you know, 12 tribes of Israel, all of our fathers, right? Were under the cloud and passed through the sea. Right? This is when we was getting uh, delivered from Egypt, right? And where uh, Moses has spread the Red Sea with the help of the Lord, right? And it says, and we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud, in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual meat and did drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Hamashiach, Okay. Because Hamashiach is Christ. All right, Hamashiach is Christ in the Old Testament. I wanted you guys to understand that we have, okay, we have the Spirit. That's why I wanted you guys to understand that we have the Spirit of God. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and get another precept because we have to get this cleared up. I want to go ahead and build this precepts up so we can understand that at the end of the days, why the heathen have to be destroyed. Okay. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 11. Let's go to one chapter over and let's get 32. Okay. Let's see here. And it says, right? For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Meaning that if we were to keep the law, statutes, and commandments correctly and judge each other, we wouldn't have to worry about the Lord coming to judge us. Right? But it said, when we are judged, we are chastising of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world okay condemned that's damned they're going to be destroyed 
the world, the rest of the world, they're going to be destroyed. Okay, why? Because they are not covered. They're not covered by the blood of the Hamashiach. The Lord did not choose them. Okay, there's only one people that's going to inherit the earth and that's going to be the Israelites. All the rest of the heathen, they're going to have to be destroyed. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, 1 Corinthians. Let's go back a few chapters. Let's get 6 and 9. All right, and it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, or adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of of the Lord Yahawasha by the Spirit of our God. All right, you heard that? It said that some of these, but you were justified. What does that mean, right? That means that we are set apart. The Lord has allowed us to repent of our sins. The Israelites, the heathen, when they sin, they have no way to get rid of that sin, no way to absolve that sin. There's nothing that they can do to get rid of that. The only people that have that ability is the people that God's people, the people that the Son of the Lord saved. Okay? So let's go ahead. Let's go a few chapters over. We're going to stay in Corinthians and build this up, right, before we get to the actual destruction of the heathens. All right, 15. Let's go down. To, uh, let's go down to 50. Small here. All right. And it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption and incorruption. Now, that's a real strong precept right there, right? Because we got to understand that it says, Salaki, <coughs> flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means that we alone receive spiritual bodies. So the kingdom is all of the earth and everything underneath the heavens. So understand this. How can the heathen survive in the kingdom of God and they do not have a spiritual body? What does it say right here? It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They will not be there in the kingdom. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption right i'm gonna keep on reading but i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed all of us israelites we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed right for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality who gets the promises and all the glory and the gifts, the Israelites. This only pertains to us, right? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, and then be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, understand this. We will have immortal bodies. So that means that there will be no more death but the heathens won't have any mortal body, so they'll be dying. So how can they, right? You understand now? It's really understand that we must be, we must love our people because at the end of the day, it's nothing but us, a beautiful planet of nothing but Israelites. That's all it's going to be. The heathen will be destroyed. Okay, let's keep on going, right? Because like we have to understand that not only that, that when the heathen are destroyed, it's going to be all of Israel and the new covenant will come to pass or we will all have spiritual bodies. The heathen cannot receive spiritual bodies. That promise is only given to Israel. Let's go ahead and get Hebrews 8 and 8. Let's go ahead and get Hebrews 8 and 8. All right. It says, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, 
The days cometh, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, not with the world. He's going to make the new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, right? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, right? The 12 tribes and our fathers, right? When I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Not everybody, once again, right? This book is not an all-inclusive book. The Bible is not an all-inclusive book. You understand? It says, I will put my laws into their mind, right? And I will write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. You understand? So this is the new covenant that we're going to get. We're going to get the new covenant of the spiritual bodies. No other nation has these covenants or these promises that are in the Bible. So they will be destroyed because they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You understand that after the thousand year reign of the Hamashiach, Yahweh himself, God the Father, comes and reigns on the earth. God the Father comes and reigns on the earth. Heathens will no longer be necessary. Certain, you know, we, we will, everybody will have spiritual bodies, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get uh, matter of fact, let's go over a couple chapters, right? Because this this is a precept to uh, you know what I just said over there, right? So let's go ahead and go over a couple of chapters. We're gonna go ahead and get this real quick. It says uh, it says for one offering he have perfected Salakia. So this is uh, Hebrews ten and fourteen. Okay, it says uh, for one offering he have perfected forever them that are sanctified. It says them that are sanctified who are the people that are sanctified let's go to exodus let's go to exodus 31 real quick all right let's go to exodus 31 all right okay here we go all right it says speak thou also unto the children of israel saying verily my sabbath ye shall keep today is the sabbath y'all right it says, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So we know that we are sanctified. Israel is sanctified. No other nation is sanctified, right? But you know what? Why I'm on this subject? Because today is the Sabbath, right? I got to bring this up. What happens if you're not keeping the, the Shabbat? It says, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So let's see, right? What happens if you're not sanctified? What happens if you're not sanctified? It says, ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy, separate, right? Unto you, everyone that defileth it, that means you're not keeping the uh, sign between and, you know, you and the Lord, right? You're defiling the, um, you know, like on um, the Shabbat. It shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Okay? Now, that's real important concerning the Sabbath. I know I went off here on a little small tangent, but the Sabbath is very important. If you die in your wickedness and you die and you're not following the Sabbath, you can forget it you automatically going to get destroyed because the law is back in play. When the Hamashiach comes, the law is back in play. You understand? So these things, right, if you die in your wickedness and you die without repenting, this goes for you uh, brothers and sisters that are out there that don't understand this truth, you know, that or don't understand that the following the law, statutes and commandments are a real deal. This thing said throughout your generations, Israel, that means every so-called Negro out there, right? This is talking to you throughout your generations. I mean, you're supposed to be following the Sabbath today from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. 
You have to make an effort. You have to keep the faith. This is one of those laws, right? Because it just says clearly, right, what will happen to you. It says, for it is holy unto you, everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Right? For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, sorry I got off on that tangent, right? But I just wanted you guys to uh, understand how serious it is to keep this Shabbat. Because if you die in your wickedness and haven't repented from doing this, you will be put to death. Believe that. All right. Um, now, back to the point at hand, right? It says, uh, I wanted to point out that we are the sanctified people. No one else is sanctified but Israel. Means that what? If you're not sanctified, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be damned. And what does that mean? You're going to get destroyed. It says, speak thou unto, Salakia, speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. Okay? We're sanctified. Right? We're sanctified. Matter of fact, let's go to Ezekiel real quick, because there's another one right there. All right? Let's go to Ezekiel real quick. All right. Ezekiel 37. Very last verse. Okay, right. This is a special one too, so we can know that it's definitely talking about us. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctifies Israel. Right? That the Lord sanctifies Israel. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Okay. All right. So let's go back to uh, you know, like the Hebrews. Right. Let's go back to Hebrews uh, ten and four. Okay, uh, 10 and 14, 10 and 14. It says, For by one offering he hath perfected forevermore them that are sanctified. That's us, right? We're the ones that are sanctified. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness, is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, that this covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds, I will write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of, of these is, there is no more offering of sins. All right, so the Israelites is the only one to get this uh, you know, particular gift here. So if you don't get this particular gift to have your sins wiped away, you're gonna get destroyed. How could you survive? The Lord said that there will be no wickedness in this kingdom. All right, let's go, go to you know, so let's go to Chronicles real quick. Because I want to prove that the kingdom, right, the kingdom is all the earth. The kingdom is the whole earth, right? By the way, it's not a round ball, by the way. <laughs> so I'll throw that in there. All right, let's go to Chronicles, right? Let's go to First Chronicles. Let's go to First Chronicles 29. Uh, All right, right? It says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. You heard that? It said, Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above Salakia, and thou art exalted as head above all. All right, so, right, let's start talking about the destruction of the heathen. Sorry, it took so long to bring that build it up for the premise. I tried to throw a little bit of precepts there and a little bit of precepts there, but I want you guys to understand in totality that. After the Hamashiach reigns for his thousand year reign, we're going to, uh, you know, those that will be risen um, in the resurrection unto righteousness and will receive a spiritual body, there will be no more heathen left. We'll just be ruling on the planet and that'll be it. We'll just be enjoying the fatness of the earth forever and ever and ever. <laughs> that sounds so great. No heathens, no wickedness, just enjoying the fatness of the earth. Man. And then it said that the Lord is going to, the earth is going to be so awesome that uh, he says that we don't even have an imagination of the things that he has for us. I mean, like now, you know, we can't even imagine the things that he has in store for us. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and go to Daniel's real quick. You know, I think this is a pretty good precept. <sighs> Daniel 2 
and 34. All right. It says, Thou sawest till that stone was cut out without hands. It smote the image. Right? That stone, right? That stone is the kingdom, right? Was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, this is talking about the different kingdoms, right? But I'm not going to get into that right now. You just need to know that these different, um, these uh, different, uh, you know, like clay and brass is talking about uh, these different elements, right? They're talking about uh, other kingdoms that have been broken down over the times, like the Greek, Babylonian, so forth and so on. And it says, um, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the golden broken to pieces together and, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. What is the stone that smote? Who was the cornerstone, right? We know it was the Lord, Yahushua, right? You know what I'm saying? And the stone that smote the image became uh, Salaki. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Right? What's that mountain? That mountain is Israel, and we're going to fill the whole earth. This is the dream, and I will tell you the interpretation thereof. Right? And it says, uh, "Oh, oh, you know, uh, Salaki. Let's skip to uh, let's skip to 44 real quick because that's just going to get the meat of it." Right, and it says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Right, and it says, which shall never be destroyed, the God of heaven. This is what I'm telling you. This is after the Hamashiach, after the Hamashiach reigns for his 1,000 years. He is the God of heaven. Right, and it says, and in the days these kings shall, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Mm. The kingdom will not be left to other people. It will only be for the children of Israel. But it shall break into pieces and consume. What is consuming? That means totally annihilate, right? Totally annihilate. Consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Man, you just can't get around precepts like that, right? You just can't get around precepts like that. It said totally consume. That means all of these nations are going to be gone. Chaff burnt up like you know, kindle in the fire. They're done. All right, let's go ahead and get Amos real quick. Let's go ahead and get some Amos. I'm gonna keep bringing out these precepts all day, right? Because we're gonna get a totality and understanding that these scriptures are for us. Everything in the Bible is for us, everything is for Israel. We have to get with these laws, statutes, and commandments and come back to our God. Because if we don't, we're gonna be destroyed right along with the heathen. And I don't want to see that for none of my brothers and sisters. I don't want you to die in your wickedness. I want you to do the law, sections, and commandments to the best of your ability and keep the faith. All right, let's get it right. Let's go to Amos 9 and 8. It says what? It says, Behold, the odds of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. What is the sinful kingdom? Right? The sinful kingdom is not the kingdom of Israel. That is not us. It says, I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not dis utterly destroy the house of Jacob. See it, the Lord. What does that mean? That we are going to be left because we have already been bought and purchased with the blood of the Hamashiach. I mean, you know, I'm, you, 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 you know what, too? We are some really special people. You understand? No one else is allowed to sin and get away with it but the children of Israel. Do you, do you, do you understand? Not even the angels in heaven. No one. Not one single person, uh, Salakia, not one other single race on the planet, not even in heaven, can get away with sinning and you have repentance, but the children of Israel. Do you understand how much the Lord loves us? I don't think you understand that. We have to really, you know, just come back to the Lord. We have to come back to the Lord and realize how much has been put on the table for us. The Lord is actually tolerating wickedness, you know, for my people. We haven't been utterly destroyed. The Lord made the earth for us. You know, he made the earth for us. I mean, like, you know, he didn't have to do that. You know, the Lord didn't have to make us. The Lord didn't have to make us. You know, he didn't have to spend his energy and his time to make us. But he did. He made us just so he made a whole earth for us, just so we can enjoy the fatness thereof. 
And every day, we're just turning our backs and spitting on the gift that the Lord has given us. <laughs> it's lucky. You know, I know I'm masked up and I know I'm maybe looking crazy to some of y'all. You know, but, you know, today, man, I'm just really in the spirit. It's lucky. All right. All right. Here we go. Right. Um, let's get. Uh, whew, man. OK, let's get a uh, second Ezra nine. All right. Let's go ahead and get some uh, apocrypha in here, too. Let's let's bring out all kinds of precepts tonight. Second Ezra right, nine. Nine to 13. Right. You know what it says? It says, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. We don't need to be worrying about them. It said that vengeance is the Lord's. We don't need to worry about them. The Hamashiach got it in hand. It said the Lord is a man of war. So what does that mean? You know, he's going to come through and he's going to do what he needs to do. You know, say so he's going to destroy, you know, say so with fire and tempest. Right. And it says, and therefore be not thou curious on how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Who's the world is? What does that tell you right there? The world belongs to the Israelites. And for whom the world is created. Man, right? And whom the world is is created you know what and we're going to get a real powerful verse right let's skip down to 22 because i want you to understand once again that all the heathen are going to be destroyed you know and you wicked israelites that don't want to come back to the lord you're going to be destroyed too right along with them so i advise you now you know this is the end times i know y'all seeing prophecy fulfilled day by day you know it's getting worse and worse stuff is getting crazy out in the streets you know pretty soon you're going to get persecuted for keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. Are you going to be ready when they come knocking on your door? All right. Let's go ahead and get it, right? Let's go ahead and get it 22. And it said what? And it said, let the multitude perish. Mm. It said, let the multitude perish, which was born in vain. The Lord does not care about that. The Lord does not care about them. It says that they were born in vain, right? And let my great be kept. Who's the great? Who's the great? Israel is the great, right? It said, let us be kept. Let the Israelites be kept. And my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. The Lord has struggled hard. Look how much stuff the Lord has to put up with. He even had to die for us. That's great labor right there for his great. He didn't die for everybody, right? So let's go ahead and get, uh, you know, let's go ahead and get some classics up in here. Well, just a little bit. I just want to read a little bit of that. You know, just to prove a little bit more that the world belongs to the Israelites. So that means everybody else, they have to be destroyed. They're gone. They're out of here. All right? Let's go ahead, uh, six. And let's go down. Oh, it's, oh, it's, this font is huge. All right. And it says, uh, what do we read? 55, right? And it says, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. Wow. There it is again, right? Let's see. This goes into the same thing. The heathen are going to get destroyed. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. But be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So I have a big old bucket of water and I accidentally spilled one little drop. I'm not gonna care about that. And that's the way the Lord feels. <laughs> Poof, they have to be destroyed, right? So let's go ahead and get, uh, you know, I'm, we're gonna bring out some precepts. Let's go to Galatians, let's go to Galatians. Let's see here, let's see here, brothers and sisters, get some Old Testament and some New Testament for these Christians. Let me see here. All right. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, right? Galatians 5 and 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Notice it said uncleanness. Who's unclean? The heathen. They're unclean. We know that the heathen are unclean, right? It says uncleanness, 
lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like, of the which I tell you before, as have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm, right? So who does that things on the earth? You know, I know I know our, our people do that too, but that's majorly that's the heathen. Because what? It said that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Right? That means all these the earth is, is are we ruling? No, we're not, right? We're going through the curses of Deuteronomy. We, we're, we're under the bondage. We're being oppressed because our people refuse to do the laws, the and commandments, and we're suffering the curses of our forefathers in Deuteronomy 28. Okay? So we're not in power right now. So the wicked is in rule, right? That's the obvious, right? We're on the bottom. We're getting uh, destroyed by everybody. You know, we're getting stepped on by everyone. You know? All right. So let's go ahead and get this out. Lucky. I don't know what that is. All right, just watch this turned on out of the mind. I don't know what was that. It's <laughs> like it. All right, here we are. And it says, uh, let's go to Jeremiah, right? Let's go to Jeremiah. Hmm, that's a good one. That's a good one. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30. Okay. Oh, let me keep going. All right. Now you know what? I'll just end it with this one right here, right? Because we've been here for quite, for quite a while. Okay. Um, we'll just end it with this one right here. Okay. It says, "Fear, it's lucky." It says, "Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob." That's us, right? That's the Israelites. Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo. I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Right? And it says, check this out, right? This is, this is the one I'm going to end it on right here. And it says, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations whether I have scattered thee what does that mean right they're going to be destroyed the Lord is going to make a full end of all nations whether I or the Lord has scattered us and we know that the Lord scattered us to all the nations so that means everybody's going to get destroyed <laughs> except for except for who let's see let's see right what about the Israel? Are we going to get destroyed? Let's see. Let's see, right? Yet, I will not make a full end of thee. All right. That's right. Israel, quam All right. It says, but I will correct thee in measure, and I will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So Israel, get on the law, statutes, and commandments, so you won't be one of these ones that get punished. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh. Kwam Yashiyah, Israel. Let's get on these laws, statutes, and commandments. Shabbat Shalom.